continents yes that's right are we streaming this live is it being recorded or just streamed oh is it okay all right this is just the introduction we haven't really started good all right so we already have wikimedians from at least three continents here if you were doing the uh prize draw the activity sheet one of them was to get a photograph of yourself with wikimedians from three continents so if you were to take a selfie right now four continents um, that's a good, yeah, 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 you're great. There's, we've exceeded the quota, so if you take a selfie right now with the class, you've met that, <laughs> right? So just one more thing we can tick. Okay, so that's where we're all from, but that's geographically where we're from. Now I want to find out where we're all from, how the level's with this. Is this okay? Yeah, okay, we'll just keep it about here then. Um, now I want to find out where we're all from and our knowledge of Wikimedia Commons. So, some of you have maybe, how many people here have done stuff in Wikipedia? Who's edited Wikipedia before? Okay, so some of you folks. So some of you may not even have a Wikipedia account yet. Is that right? You've not set up a username or a password? You've never actually edited in the Wikimedia, okay, so we might need to mix you up with people who have, so you'll need to probably create an account to get started. Okay, of, the f of how many people here have ever uploaded a photo to Wikimedia Commons? Right, so you, some of you do have Commons logins, that's great, so that's good, that's, a, that's an interesting way. Many, most people come to Commons via Wikipedia, and start there, and then want to know how do I add photographs to articles. You guys are coming the other direction, starting with commons, and wanting to add photographs that some people might use for Wikipedia articles. That's fine. Okay, so that means most of you, mo how many people here have got a Wikimedia login and password, either commons or Wikipedia? Right, so does everyone have one? Good, so we don't need to set anyone up with a brand new user account now? If there's someone that doesn't, help the person next to you uh, get you set up, okay? So we can just get started. Okay, so we've got a room assistant here. Do you want to introduce yourself? Just Yeah, um, Chris Lowes, um, project manager at Leaf Team Africa. Yep. So Seslas is a very experienced user, and he's going to be here to help with me if we get stuck. If you get stuck with anything, just put up a hand. Don't sit there and stare at the screen and think, if I just stare at the screen, maybe this will all come right. <laughs> it, it doesn't always work. So Sislaus is there. If you just put up a hand, Sislaus will come diving around and see what the problem is. It will often be some small thing that is easy to fix, okay? But it would be really, it's really important. I know it's, it's, you might be a bit shy about saying something, but we're actually, we're, we're not a big room. We're just a little crowd of people. Look at us. Just a little, we're all on this the learning journey together, so don't be worried. All right, so a few of you have uploaded photos. How many people have uploaded 100 photos to Wikimedia Commons? Okay, so yeah, that's good. So, and a lot more than that, much more than 100? Very large number, that's good. All right, so you're gonna be one of the helpers. So if you're someone at your table who's a newie, you are therefore the helper of your Sorry if it's rude to point. I'm sorry. I, forget. I know that's a bit rude in some places. Um, but you'll be helping people at your table. Who else? Is last you've got you. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if we can bring you up to the front here so you can sit with the newies here. It would be nice if there is someone more experienced near you that can help. Okay? So, hmm? Okay. Um, so how many photos do you think you have uploaded? 25,000 is a lot. Yeah. 
That's a lot. Though it's surprising how fast that can happen once you get in the habit. It just, yeah, years and years, you just tick away. Okay, so you're a super user there. So there are many people who have uploaded tens of thousands of photographs um, to Wikimedia Commons. I've uploaded a lot, but that's because I work with museums and other large collections who have to donate photos. But many people take their own photographs and donate them to the public good. Now this is marvelous, this is a wonderful thing. So what I want to do today is walk you through, yeah, because we have a lot of beginners here, so we're not going to get into some of the advanced features of Commons, but I will give you links to some of the advanced tools if people are interested. I want to just, I want spend, to just spend the next, the next couple, of couple of hours going through, going through the upload the process, process, how to add, how add your photos, add your to, photos commons, to Commons, how to find photos in Commons, and some of the issues of copyright and other problems that might occur that you need to get over when you're working with Commons. Now, I would really like everyone to not just watch me do things, but to do things yourself. This means you'll need two things. You'll need to log in to Wikimedia Commons, right? And you'll need to have a photograph of your own. Now, what sort of photograph? It needs to be a photograph that you own the copyright for. What does that mean? What qualifies? Is it a photograph that's... A photograph you took yourself. Not a photograph that someone gave you, or a photograph of you that your friend took that you think is really cute. No, that's, but you don't own the copyright to that photograph. So we're gonna go into this in more detail, but you're only allowed to upload photos that are your own photos that you own the copyright for. There are some exceptions, which we're just, so the clever people at the back know, but if you want to add photos, you want to donate photos to Wikimedia Commons, they should be your photos that you took yourself with your own camera, right? Okay, so undoubtedly you will have some of those available on your tablets or on your computer. Try and find one that you can use as your first upload photo, your first test photo. And ideally, again, to avoid problems, Yep, pull up a chair. To avoid problems, it should be uh, a, f a nice photo of maybe some, some trees or a landscape or something. It probably shouldn't be a photograph of your neighbor who doesn't realize that they're about to have their photo uploaded to Wikimedia Commons for the world to see, right? And it probably shouldn't be a photograph of someone else's copyrighted work, like a painting done by someone else maybe a sculpture sometimes, but probably let's avoid that. So not a photo of some artwork or a sign that someone painted, not a photo of a person that you haven't asked permission from, if you can upload their photo, right? So just to pick a photo, a nice photo of a building or a mountain or a tree or your pet or something like that, or a selfie, of course, that would also be fine. So you've got, so those are the two things we want to sort out. I want you to go to Wikimedia Commons. Now, if I switch over to here, do I have, have the channel? Okay. So I'm going to alternate between. Uh, is that gonna, there we go. Okay, alternate between the two, right. Okay, now, can everyone see the screen okay here? Right. So the address that we're going to is commons, I'll make that even bigger, dot wikimedia.org. Okay, so if you can all open that up and either bookmark it or keep the tab visible on your screen because you'll need to come backwards and forwards to these. Okay, is this working? About here? Yep. Okay, I'll just try and keep myself here then. Right. So, what is Commons? What is Wikimedia Commons? So you're familiar with projects like Wikipedia, which was the very first attempt to build an encyclopedia that anyone could edit. The problem is an encyclopedia needs to have pictures as well as words. Okay, that was no problem. In the early days of Wikipedia, 
Anyone could just upload a picture as well as add text to an article. The problem came when you started having Wikipedias in lots of languages, French, Japanese, Malay, Spanish. All of those Wikipedias, all the articles were written by different people in different languages. Some of the, the articles in English Wikipedia tend to be quite long because it started in English and there's lots of English editors. The articles in other languages are often shorter. But every time someone wanted to use a photo of Bill Clinton or something, they would upload it to English Wikipedia, but then they'd have to upload the same photo to French Wikipedia, and German Wikipedia, and Malay Wikipedia, and Japanese Wikipedia. And actually, do you know how many, how many different language Wikipedias there are? Do you know the answer? What are you up to? Is it over 300 now? Yeah. Right, so over 300. And some, some topics there might be articles in hundreds of Wikipedias, like Bill Clinton. And that means hundreds of times people have to upload the photograph. And that seemed, at the, in the early days, like that was a bit of a waste. That was ridiculous. Why do we have to do upload the same photograph again and again and again? Why can't we just put the photo somewhere central and let all the Wikipedias link to them and bring them in when we need to? Right? That seemed a sensible idea. And that's where Wikimedia Commons came from. It was originally intended to be an image library or an image database for all the different Wikipedias to use. So the photos could stay there and any, any Wikipedia could use them. <coughs> Wikimedia Commons is hosted in computers in the USA, so it uses US copyright law. This is important, as we'll discover. Right. But what they discovered also is that when people started adding these images to commons, you could add lots of images. You didn't have to use them in Wikipedia articles. These are, in fact, images that anyone could use for anything, not just Wikipedia. And it became a gigantic library of freely usable media. So not just images, but sounds and video and diagrams, and maps, and all sorts of different media, non-text media, that anyone could freely use. And we're up to 96 million freely usable media files, mostly photographs, but lots of other stuff. Video is increasingly becoming important. So anyone can add things to Wikimedia Commons, as long as they follow American copyright law, right? And anyone can download and use things in Commons as long as they follow the licensing rules, which we'll also talk about. So the copyright law, licensing rules. As long as you follow both of those, you can add images, you can pull images down and use them. So it's a really important, useful resource, not just for Wikipedia, but for everyone. Okay? So often when... I talk to volunteers, I, I meet people who are, vo who are photographers, who are maybe not professional photographers, but are keen amateur photographers who might have thousands and thousands of photos on their hard drive, right? And I ask, what are you doing with those photos? And some of them say, oh, I want to become a professional one day and sell my photos to magazines. And I say, oh, and when is that happening? And they say, one day. I spent lots of money on my camera, so one day I'll be a famous photographer. But actually, everyone has a nice camera these days. In fact, you know, I have a nice camera in my pocket. You would probably do as well. So everyone's a photographer now. We all have thousands of photos. Um, are we all going to become professional photographers? Probably not, right? So what are we going to do with all these photos? Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually share them? If other people could maybe, if maybe they might be useful to someone one day, or education, or as a memento of a place they visited, or uh, for a news story in the paper, or any, any number of other uses we haven't even thought of. So this is a way that people who like taking photographs and are good at it can let other people use their photos particularly if you had no intention of making money out of your photos, why not let other people use them? That's the philosophy behind Wikimedia Commons, right? 
Now, we're all photographers now, and some of us take photos all the time, all day long, everywhere. Sometimes we might be really good, we might have amazing cameras, sometimes we just have a phone. If we're in the right place at the right time, a phone is fine. We could take a photo of something where there's no openly usable photo in Wikimedia Commons, a beetle or a, or a butterfly or a mountain that no one's ever photographed before, where there's no photograph that anyone could use except yours that you just took. So there's ways that anyone can be really, uh, to make some really valuable, useful contributions to the world's knowledge just by taking photographs. Okay, so that's the um, philosophy behind Commons. Now, it's, it's true that anyone can upload a photo to Commons, just like Wikipedia is the encyclopedia that anyone can edit, right? So in theory, you can go to a Wikipedia article and click edit and just start typing anything you like. That doesn't work though, does it? You know what happens. Someone will come along and they'll cancel that, won't they, if they think it's nonsense, or they might argue with you and they might delete some of it and you have to put it back in and then you have to, so it's not as simple as it seems to edit Wikipedia. And ditto with Commons. It's not always so simple to say, I've just got this photograph, I'm going to donate it to Wikimedia Commons, because sometimes there are some rules about what you can actually legally upload to Commons, and we'll talk about some of those. But let's actually go through the workflow. I'll show you how it works. Enough talking. So yesterday I was in the Singapore Botanic Gardens, and it was amazing. There were a lot of chickens, lots of chickens, um, lots of neat trees that I had not seen before. These are little, yeah, the Oh yeah, don't feed the otters. This is a good one. Hang on. And this little lizard here, crested lizard. Isn't they cute? Yeah. So it was a great, great visit. And I want to say, I, I want to share some of like this beautiful thing here, which is a uh, sandpaper vine or queen's wreath. They just have the most gorgeous flowers grading from, you know, and I want to see maybe, it's, oh, we should probably see if there's a Wikipedia article about this. Does it have a nice photo of the flowers? That would be quite neat, could be useful for someone. I don't even know what this plant is. I hope someone can ID it. So um, I'll show you how someone could do that. So I, maybe I have a nice photograph, let's say. Yeah? Yeah, iNaturalist. We're gonna talk about iNaturalist. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. iNaturalist is a very good way to get IDs for things. Okay, so we have a picture of a chicken here. Not a very good photo of a chicken, but it will do. Okay. Now, let's say I wanted to put that photo into Wikimedia Commons. All right. So, and if you know what you're doing, you can follow along with me with a photo. This is how I do it. So, we go upload. Okay. Now, notice I'm logged in. My username is what? Can you see? Giant flightless birds, that's me. Okay? All right, so the workflow is this. Now, when you first time you go into Commons, you're going to get um, a little warning like this. Looks very much like the signs on the Singapore subway, doesn't it? Um, I wonder what the name of this little jigsaw-headed guy is. He's very cute. Uh, so it does tell you some of the rules here. They're really trying to stop people from uploading copyrighted photos of other by other people to Commons. So it does tell you some of the rules, but I always skip this step. So I want to upload a photo to Commons. I can just drag the image there, like that. If it ever gives you this error message, which it sometimes does, ignore it. I don't know why it does that. Okay. Now I am going to continue. Right, now Common starts by asking me information, straight away. First thing it asks me, the first is one of two questions. This file is my own work, this file is not my own work. You have to choose one of these two before you can progress. So if you say the file is my own work, um, 
you can put, it'll start with probably your Wikimedia username. I always type my actual name in there, right? Mike Dickerson is my name. I think it's good to use your real name there because if someone wants to reuse this photograph and credit you, they probably would like rather credit your actual name rather than some weird handle that's your Wikipedia name that no one understands what that is. Okay, so I do try and use my real name if I want to get credit for a photograph. Okay, and you'll notice that there's I, there's a legal statement here. I irrevocably grant anyone to right to use this work under the Creative Commons Attribution for license. Oh my goodness, what does that all mean? Uh, there's actually a bunch of different licenses that you can pick for your photographs, and we're going to talk about what those all mean. But for the moment, all we're going to do is just pick the recommended one, and we'll see what that means a little bit later on. So essentially what this means is anyone can use, if I upload this, anyone can use this photograph for anything as long as they credit me. That's what that particular license means. Mm, yeah, share alike is the default, yeah. I prefer attribution, but we go... Yeah, yeah, we'll go, we'll talk about that. Later. Okay, so that's all good. This is, th this is if this is my photo. Now, what about though, if I didn't take this photo? Now we have problems because we have to say, okay, where did you get that photo from? And you have to say, no, I got it from this book or this website. And who is the person that took the photograph, right? And now tell us why you are sure you have the right to publish this work. And now there's lots of reasons why you might be allowed to do that. It might already be published under a Creative Commons license. Um, it might be on Flickr under a Creative Commons license. We'll look and see what this means. The copyright might have expired in the USA. It might be so old that copyright's no longer applicable. So in this case, because remember that Commons is hosted in America, it uses US copyright law, which means basically before 1928, okay? is uh, one of the common reasons. Works that were made by the US government aren't copy are openly licensed, they aren't copyrighted. Maybe there's another reason you know. I found it on the internet, I'm not sure, is not the best reason. Probably not the best, but look at, it does actually say, I believe this work is freely licensed. If I don't add the necessary licensing information in a timely fashion, it will be deleted. So you can try, you can upload it, and you're pretty sure that that's licensed, and you might have to go away and do some research. In the meantime, people will give you a few days, maybe, and then you can come back and you can add the correct license information later. But that's not the best way to do things. So there are lots of reasons why you might be able to upload someone else's photo legally. Uh, but to start with, I think it's always best to start with photos you took. Because you can just say, this is my own work. I'm the copyright owner. All right. So we do that. And then we go, we have to do some changes here. So first thing to fix. It needs a proper title. Now, can everyone at the back read that text at that size? Or should I make it larger? All good in the back row? Yeah? You people in the chairs, I don't know what to do about you. You can get yourself a table and come sit closer if you want. I wash my hands of you. Okay. All right. But maybe you just like to not be able to see the screen. Perhaps that's your that's what's fun for you. It's all right. Whatever 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 amuses you. Good. Okay. So we need to give it a sensible title and we're gonna say Rooster in Singapore. Um, and sometimes another thing I do is when I upload photos is I add my initials like that. So I can guarantee that that's a unique file name. This is just the image file name. It doesn't need to be huge and long. The only job it does is it separates this photo from all the other photos in Commons. That's all. It's just a label. And that's why I put my initials there because I know that no one else will be using those on a file, an image title. Okay. Now you've got a caption and a description here. Okay. So the caption has to be really short. The description can be a lot longer if you want. Uh, if you just want to say, Mr. in Singapore, Botanic 
gardens. Okay. Um, I can even copy and paste that into um, the chickens. There were wild, not domestic. No, coming, it's coming, coming. Okay, date is the next thing. Now the date, luckily, is a property of the photo itself. So my camera has tagged the photo with the hopefully the correct date and time, and even the time is correct, yeah. So that's all good. So usually the date comes with the photo. Of course, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes a very old photo or one you've scanned won't have a, a date, a correct date attached to it. So you have to do the best you can. Type in a year, even a year, even a decade is better than nothing, right? But in this case, we know the exact date, time, and second that the photo was taken. Okay? Now, categories. Categories are a very difficult thing when you're just getting started with commons. As you start looking for photos in commons, you'll discover that categories are quite useful, but you never know when you're starting off, which categories should I apply? And as it turns out, there's actually quite a lot that we could use. But let's just try something we, I'm pretty sure, this should be Singapore Botanic Gardens. Okay. And as I type, it will start doing autofill, and sure enough, there is already existing a category, Singapore Botanic Gardens. That's nice. Now, here's a common mistake that people make when they're just getting started with commons, is they think categories are like hashtags that you need as many as possible, and so I should just keep adding words like chicken and rooster and bird and, you know. But no, actually, you don't want lots and lots and lots and lots of general categories. You really want just, ideally, maybe just one very specific one would be great. Now, it's possible when we go, look, there might even be a special category called chickens in Singapore Botanic Gardens. Right? If that's the case, then that would be an even better category to use, and we wouldn't need to use Singapore Botanic Is there one? Did you check? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, and maybe the chicken is called Fred. So perhaps there's a special, maybe Fred, everyone photographs Fred. And so perhaps there's a hundred photos of Fred already. It's a lot of tourists there. And so there could be a special category called Fred the Chicken in Singapore Botanic Gardens in 2023. Maybe. Sometimes there are so many photos that you have these very, very specific categories, but you can not normally know ahead of time. So just start with one basic category and then we can have a look and maybe we can improve it. The good thing, though, is that there are people in Commons, volunteers like yourselves, who just like adding categories to things. And they will come along to your photo and they'll fix the categories as part of their volunteer work. So you don't have to get everything right straight away. Just like Wikipedia, you can start something, other people will come along and improve it. All right, so this is all right. This is all the basic information we need with a photo. We've said we uploaded it, a title, a very short caption, a more detailed description, the date, and at least one category to help people find it. Okay, so that's the very basics. Now we're going to publish that. Okay. Now, there's a step that we can add um, that uh, is adding the structured data, adding metadata. So we've added some text data there, but we can also go and add information about it. Um, for example, what does this image depict? What's it a picture of? Now, why we, should we do that? Because we've just typed that. We just said, it's a chicken. And we're saying botanic gardens. And that's fine. That's text that a human being could read. But if we use this structured data, a computer can read it. And the computer is using the data, all the, all the labels from Wikidata, to help with its categorization and sorting. So this is a step you can skip, right? You can skip this step if you don't know about Wikidata, if you've never done this before. But I always try and do this as well. So I know this is a picture of, this depicts a chicken, OK? A domesticated bird kept by humans, primarily as a food source. I wonder if there's a feral chicken. 
Oops. Oh yeah, feral chicken. Okay, that's even more precise. Good. So it depicts a feral chicken. What else does it pick? It actually depicts Singapore Botanic Gardens too. That's also sort of depicted there. Oh yep, that's in Wikidata as well. Okay, but actually it's mostly the chicken. So I'm going to mark as prominent. I'm going to say it's mostly a feral chicken. Okay. Now this is a little step that will help with some of the search tools are now using this kind of structured data to help people find things because the commons categories are not that great. So this is another way that you can make the commons a bit easier for people to find photos in. All right. Now, like I say, this part here is an optional step and you can skip it. Now I'm going to publish that data there. Okay. Now it's ready to go. I can add a link to Wikipedia articles if I want. I always now go and I check to see what that looked like. So here we go. Click on its name. And this is the file there. Not the best photo. Okay, so this is what it looks like in Commons. Here's the description. Date, source, own work. I took it. And me, author. Licensing information file history, file usage, even what sort of camera it took it. And there's the category Singapore Botanic Gardens. Now, let's just go back up. Why was this a useful thing to do? If you needed to send a photo to someone, right? So someone wanted, a, I was doing a, a newspaper story about the wild chickens in the Singapore Botanic Gardens. And they ask you, do you have any photos? And you say, yeah, I do. All you need to send them is this URL. Oopsie daisy. Sorry. Where was I? Did I go backwards here? I've just lost my chicken. This is the problem. Um, there we go. You can just send them this URL, copy and paste it into an email, and that's a link to the page that hosts this chicken photo. Oh, oh, where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Oh, there it is. Oh, I missed that. It's right in front of me. Yep, that would work too. So that would start an email with that link. Yep. Now, the reason we want to share this link is because they can then go to this page. They can choose what version of the photo they download. So they can pick the resolution, right? So you can, and this is better than trying to attach a photo to an email or share it via messenger or something or, you know, via Twitter, because those services will often downgrade the photo, right? Or if you try and send the full resolution photo after you've sent, if you've got attached 10 photos, suddenly the email is too big to send, right? So this is a much better way to share photographs, put them up in commons, and let people pick the resolution they want. Okay, so that's one good reason why commons is useful, right? Also, we've got information, like an actual date it was taken, who took it, some information about the photo, none of this stuff is necessarily there if you just email the photo to someone, right? So the person who has this link can now get background information. They have an author that they can credit properly in the caption. There's also a license here, right, that tells them how they can legally use the photograph. So they say it's licensed uh, and you can share it, you can share it with anyone, you can adapt it, you know, chop it up, change the colors, make a painting out of it, but you have to give appropriate credit, okay? That's it. That's what, it, that's what the Creative Commons Attribution License says. There's a bunch of these different licenses we'll look at. So that's the only thing that is, that is restricting their use of the photograph. And also other things, other than interesting information like when it was uploaded, who uploaded it, me, you can add a new version if I could add it. If, you, if I found a better, high resolution version of the same photograph, I could replace that version with a better one, as long as it's the same photograph. Okay. So this is a great use of commons as a way, as a photo library, a way that you can store photographs for other people to use and share them with them. Right. Now, let's just look at the Singapore Botanic Gardens category, because this is how commons organizes things. So we click on that category. Okay. So we've got, oh, look at this. We've got lots of different subcategories. Here's this very organized 
people, sculptures, signs, streams. And we've just discovered there's an animals in the Singapore Botanic Gardens category. What if I expand that? Birds in Singapore. Oh, we're narrowing it down. Do you reckon there is a... Oh, there is not a chickens. No, I happen to know, having done biology, that chickens are neither Anseriformes, Clumbiformes, Passeriformes, or Cetaceriformes. No. Okay, so it looks like the best category we could pick is birds in Singapore Botanic Gardens. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the category. Okay. And I can use this particular tool called Hotcat to modify it and change it to birds in Singapore Botanic Gardens. Right. So as you get more used to commons, now, particularly if you started doing lots of photos of the botanic gardens, you go explore those categories and you figure out, okay, there's actually a bunch of different ways I can categorize this by the different species of tree or by the pe if there's people there or different parts of the gardens have their own category. And you get more experience and you get better at applying the right categories. But like I said, there are people who will do that for you because we know that other volunteers have been really busy creating all these subcategories, right, and organizing all of this. There are other volunteers already out there working away in commons, fixing all this up for you, so you don't have to get it all right. They'll come and tidy things up. Okay. So that was a basic upload of a photo to commons, right? Now, that's just one photo. You can actually do a batch of photos at once, particularly if they're all the same thing. It's actually not that hard to do, but we'll just take some questions right now. Is there anything that came up while you were watching that that you want to ask about or have any thoughts about? I won't go on until I get one question. Yes. Right. How you want to know how time the picture is when the picture is downloaded, downloaded. not uploaded, not uploaded by you, by by you, yeah. How do you how how does the Commons know what time the picture was uploaded, as opposed to being taken, right? My English, my English is yep. not, uh, as good as I wish. Yeah. We. Um, oui. Combien de fois euh, j'ai une, une photo euh, qui vient d'une bibliothèque euh, qui est dans le domaine public et euh, je voudrais savoir cette photo là elle a été utilisée combien de fois ou téléchargée combien de fois oui uh, so she wishes to know if there is a count of how many times combien de fois oui used. je comprends so is uh, no this is a problem with commons is you cannot tell how many people have downloaded your photograph or how many times and this is a big problem, partly because they don't, Wikipedia does not want to track that sort of information, but it does make it hard when you are working with an institution and uploading their photographs. How, what can you tell them? Like, how many people have used this photograph? You can't really tell them. You can, there are tools to track how many times a Wikipedia article with the photograph on has been viewed, and that is useful, but the, we are lacking a lot of tools to track reuse, right? So that is a problem. Did you have a... Is the same? Yeah, yeah. I'd actually, and I'll just add an addendum there, those tools are also a bit broken at the moment. So it's making it very hard for people who work with institutions to prove that these photos are being seen. It's a big problem. Can you go to the picture to the... Um, oh, thank you. Can you go to the picture, please, and um, go to the history? Sure. History? Is there a link to your history? Estates? I mean, some statistics about the uh, go up. Okay, so that's the. Can I go up? Uh, let's um, see. Can we go to statistics? Do we have stats and commons? Uh, Page information. We can I'm get. Sure. Yeah, we'll have page information. We'll have stats on views. Okay, or well, somewhere. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, there'll be page views. Yeah, so the page, just like a Wikipedia article, it does track page views, 
So that does show me how many people might have looked at the photograph, but it doesn't tell you if anyone's actually reused it for anything. Yeah, it's and of course, you know, that's how many people have looked at it in commons, but actually we're often more interested in how many people have looked at it in different Wikipedia projects where it's much more visible. So, okay. So that's all good. So that's uploading a single photograph. The upload process for... Yeah. Like, um, Sorry, please continue. The tools, they are broken. I think Glam Morgan is working. Yeah, Glam Morgan's sort of... Yeah, we've, we're having a bit of discussion about exactly what's still working, but it's it's very annoying. Yeah, Glam Morgan is about the only thing that I was finding was still useful. But yeah, we've got some issues. Okay. So if I had three photographs the same, and it always gives us here a message, okay? These are photographs of the same plant. Now, things to notice. Sometimes the photographs get tilted sideways. Don't worry, it just does that. It all comes right at the end. Do not be alarmed. So I'm telling you, I would wish someone in Commons would actually fix these things. Wouldn't that be nice? But apparently nobody else but me has noticed that it does this, that gives the weird error message that sometimes the photographs go sideways, whatever. That's all fine. So we go continue, files of my own work, da 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 da, right? And I can create a title. Uh, let's see. There was somewhere here. That's it. Nope, sorry. There we go. Okay, so it's sandpaper vine. Now, when you're doing multiple photographs, which is something I recommend doing them in batches, like this. Okay. You can feel free to follow along with a photo of your own. Okay, and yep, is Petraea volubilis, and we'll put that into the description. Don't know if I spelled that right. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 we'll get to that. Yep. Okay, we're making italics with a couple of little quote marks like this. And it also probably has its own category as well. So if you notice, we can just... Yep. Petrovolubilis. And in Gambia too. Interesting. In, in that Gambia. That's helpful. Okay. So I've just done this one here. Now the nice thing about adding multiple photos in a batch is you can use this tool, which is copy information to all the uploads following. You only have to put the information in once, and then you can copy it down. So I'm going to copy the title, and it will add 01, 02, 03 to all of those titles. Same caption, same description. I won't copy the date because they were taken at slightly different times, a few seconds apart. I will copy the categories and any other information. And when I go copy, as you can see, that all that information has been copied down, including the categories. So that's all great. So what I recommend when you're uploading to Commons, pick a bunch of photos that all have the same information about them. Same categories, same place, same description. All the information is the same, except there might be slightly different shots, okay? And, save it, and upload them in small batches like this when you're getting started. Okay, so now I can... Oopsie daisy. Yeah, there's, oh, there's botanical illustrations of it. Interesting. I'm going to just copy this species name. Right. So now when I go publish, it has a wee think. Dumpty dumpty dum, publish, publish, published. And the same thing goes for adding that metadata. So I can say this is a depiction of the triovolubilis. Okay. And it's also sort of 
a, pic, a depiction of Singapore Botanic Gardens, right? But the portrayal of this is prominent. Okay, and I want to copy this down to the other two images so I can go copy statements to all files. And yes, I want them all to have the same metadata. Good. So now these all three all have the same metadata. And I go publish. Okay. And now we have three more images. Takes a moment. There we go. Three more images, all numbered. And it looks like this one is on its side, but when I click, you will see that it is not. It is indeed vertical. That's nice. Right, so we've got the structured data, right, showing what it depicts, and that the most important thing is the plant, not the gardens. We've got credit information, we've got italics on the Latin name, as it should, using two single quotes to turn things into italics. This all looks lovely. Isn't this lovely? And we've even got nice categories, okay? Probably we could do even better. Now, the question I have is, is this, this is, I think it's actually quite a nice photograph. Um, other people seem to have taken some okay photos of it. Yeah, aren't these lovely? Gosh. Look at them all. This is obviously a popular garden plant. Wow. So this is something that people have photographed in lots of different sizes and shapes, right? I think this one is nice because I seem to be the only person that have done a portrait soft focus background picture of it. So I'm, of course, biased, but I do think that is actually quite a nice close-up of the flowers. So I'm going to just copy this, and we scroll up here, we'll see there's a link to the Wikipedia article. Okay. And I'm going to rather cheek, a bit cheekily... I think my photo of the flowers is nicer than that one, so I'm going to replace it. Okay? So I'm going to use my photo. Uh, did you see me copy the file name just before? Yeah. Ah. And just made this up spontaneously. Okay. So I'm going to go edit. Those of you who've edited Wikipedia before will know that this is the visual editor view that we're working in. A nice way to edit Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, do we want to? Um, should I? Should I really? I mean, someone can always replace it back. Is this a description? It does look nice, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it's just, it's just, it's no better than mine. It's no better than mine. You know, <laughs> Commons does have a ranking system for noting especially good or high quality images. Which uh, And there are some beautiful photographs, and some of them feature on the main page of Commons every day. So it would be very cheeky of me to replace a quality image with the one that I just took on my phone. But in New Zealand, we actually have this all the time. Most of the New Zealand plants have terrible photos. So a photo you take on your phone is probably better than the one that's in Wikipedia, and sometimes there is no photo in Wikipedia. So that's what I'm demonstrating here. So we go edit... We're going to double click on this box here and I'm going to paste in the image name of my photograph. Right? That's all I had to do. Just change the image name, apply. And now we have my ah, quite high quality image. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Okay. And now I'm going to go publish. Um, and I'm not even going to say, I'm going to say different photo. Now, there we go. I think that's quite nice, though, isn't it? Nice. Given I just snapped it with my phone, you know, imagine if I'd had a, a decent camera. Um, okay, so that's fine. Now, of course, because this is Wikipedia, anyone is welcome to come and change that for a different photo if they want to. And that's fine. It's very easy if they wanted to just revert back to their old photo, they can just click undo in the file history, and that's fine. I don't mind, you know? I'm not going to get into a fight over whether my photo gets used in the article or not. There's lots more stuff. There's plenty to do. don't have time to get in fights about photos. Okay, but that's how you can add a photograph to a Wikipedia article. It's pretty easy.
So I recommend, this is why I work a lot on plants, because photographs of New Zealand ferns, for example, is hardly any good photos in most of those articles. Um, and often, in, even if there is a nice article about a plant, there might not be a good photo of the flowers, the flowers up close, the fruits, the seeds, one leaf, underside of a leaf, the leaf in autumn when it's changed colour, the trunk, the bark, the roots, and the overall form of the tree in summer and in winter, if you're in a country with deciduous trees that lose their leaves. So there's lots of scope. I think all plant articles should have those photos. So there's lots of scope, lots of work to be done. So even just if I chose, you know, look at this, this is a very short article. It's actually pretty terrible. This is, this is awful. There's no photos of the leaves, for example. I could probably help with that. Right, so if you wanted to just pick one thing, like saying I'm going to go every morning for my walk through the botanic gardens and take a photo, lots of photos of just one kind of plant, and then at lunchtime I'm going to come back, upload them all to Commons, and then check the Wikipedia article to see if any of my photos could be useful. That would be a fantastic service, right? Now just apply that to any other topic, sports or culture or the arts or music, recording, music recordings, performances if you play an instrument, all sorts of different things that you could be capturing and adding to Commons to help improve Wikipedia or for anyone else to use. So you can see that this is a very exciting project to many people, people who don't think that, oh, I'm not really an encyclopedia, I don't really write encyclopedia articles, but they might be really good photographers or artists because of course you can, if you're an artist, if you paint or draw, you can add your drawings under an open license to Collins as well. Okay. So there's lots of potential for using Commons to improve articles like this. Yeah, so this would be a nice one because it has uh, leaves as well. Okay, so that's the workflow that I've gone through usually with Commons when we're trying to um, work on New Zealand plants and animals, say. But you could apply this to any appropriate topic. For example, even just walking through the market, uh, through an open-air market or a hawker stall, um, and taking photographs of food. Fruits, raw ingredients, fish, vegetables, really nice photographs of all of those up close under good lighting and use those in the appropriate Wikipedia articles. It's really amazing how bad some of the food photography is in Wikipedia. And yet, as you know, we're here in Singapore and in Malaysia too, the most incredible food in the world. And there are so many dishes and you could go to a hawker stall and get one of everything. And I'm sure the local Wikimedia chapter would pay for it all. Um, <laughs> of course they would. Uh, it's all very cheap. And then just bring some portable lights and stands. Small LED lights are quite cheap and light that beautifully and take a lovely photograph of it on the table right there in the environment of the hawker stall and take a, a really beautiful food photo. You know, imagine if you did that for all the dishes at your local food market and then uploaded them to all the different articles about Malay cuisine or Chinese cuisine or Indonesian or, you know, Penang. Um, there's so many different things that you could take on as projects to document in Wikimedia Commons. Okay, so that's the process of uploading. Now, before we start talking about some of the problems that you need to be aware of, copyright rules and so forth, um, has anyone got any ideas about how they might be able to use Commons or someone could use Commons as a volunteer project? What could you do with this knowledge now? Any suggestions? You could go on a photo walk as a pet's project. A photo walk. Explain what that would, what would that be like. So just like you just uh, mentioned, as an instance, you could you know uh, go to the local market and then get to capture maybe some meals or whatever food that maybe lo locals in Singapore uh, do cook or love to enjoy. So. 
perhaps that um, image or those images or videos possibly mm. could be used to illustrate, let's say, something towards um, what Wiki loves folklore. You know. Yeah. Yep, Wiki Loves Folklore is a good photo competition. There are photo competitions each year on different topics, like Wiki Loves Monuments, Wiki Loves Science is running this year, Wiki Loves Plants will be running next year, uh, Wiki Loves Africa, there's lots. And these are actually really good, we find, to mobilize people to engage with the projects for the first time. As a lot of people suddenly realize that they have lots of photos, they like taking photos, and they can win a prize. Their, their wonderful photo could end up being used or featured in Commons. Um, and this is a good opportunity to get people involved in your community. Now, you mentioned video. That's another thing. If you wanted to think about ways, not just taking photographs of food, but with, of course, the consent of the person being filmed, photographs of them preparing food. Or even your mum preparing food, or your grandmother, you know, making a particular traditional dish and talking about it. The video of her doing that could be featured as a video on a Wikipedia article. And you could be documenting something that has not really been captured before. And because so few of the... That, that is an image, that's a, that's a piece of video that's now freely usable by anyone in the world, unlike a lot of video which is copyrighted. So you're providing a really great service in documenting cultural heritage for doing those sorts of projects. So think about things like that. Anyone else have any suggestions or any thoughts about things that they could do? Yes. So I might just repeat what you said, but I think one uh, interesting way of uh, thinking about how to uh, integrate commons within the traveling would be to just look up because as everybody go, does when we travel, we plan in advance and where we're going to go, blah, blah, blah. And mm. when sometimes you uh, look up on uh, Wikipedia mm -hmm. and uh, an interesting place, like the picture is not interesting or there's no picture at all, yep. you can just like uh, list down places you want to like hunt and add photos to them. Yep. So that's what I just did uh, since the workshop began. Yep. And I'm... I'm proud because I n usually I never do that and I have tons and tons of pictures and now I just did it for a, uh, a trip I did uh, back in March and mm. I just uh, uploaded the picture, updated the uh, Wikipedia page and you know it's just for every uh, one in the world to see so yeah. if everybody does that I think we're just going to expand so much the quality of Wikipedia. Right. And so, so thank you for that. Yeah, so here's a, a tool called Wikishootme which is a terrible name. <laughs> And it takes a little while to load. But what Wikishootme does is it goes to Wikidata and it looks for all, picks a place like Singapore, and looks for every hill, valley, building, park, fountain, public sculpture, and it m draws a map. So the blue is where someone has taken a photo and put it in Commons. Okay? So you can see there's quite a lot of photography around this bit of Singapore. The green is a place or thing or monument or hill or fountain that has a photo in Wikidata attached to it, right? Like the Cathay building. The red is where there's a thing that has no photo. Singapore Millennium Foundation, Five Guys Plaza, Singapore. There's a restaurant that's there if you want to go and photograph it. No one's taken a photo. Okay? In fact, you can see there's quite a lot of red. Some hotels. Right? A lot of hotels, actually, at the moment. <coughs> if there's a photo but it hasn't been attached to Wikidata, we can fix that. No, yeah, it won't show up. Uh, yeah, no, it won't. It won't. So it only looks at Wikidata. And even worse, there are things that have a little circle inside, which means there's an entire Wikipedia article about them, which has no photo. Right? So the Intercultural Theatre Institute has a photo, but uh, Selegi House has no photo in its article. So these should be big waving red flags calling out to you, saying, hey, hey, let's go fix that problem. So this is a lovely little tool that visualizes where there are gaps. 
you can apply it. Just go to Wiki Shoot Me. I'll put the link into the the links thing that I'm going to share with you all. Uh, you can apply this to your own hometown. When you get back, just go and Wiki Shoot Me and look around you, and then go out at lunchtime with your phone or your camera and start documenting the missing buildings, places, things, and upload them to Commons. And then later, you can, when you learn Wikidata, you can add them across to Wikidata. But just use this as a tool to tell you where there are gaps where things have not been photographed. Okay, so it's a very, very handy little um, device. This WikiShootMe. Okay, now let's go and look at some of the downsides. I'm going to give you a quick. Um, I can't even play. I'm having a mental block. Come on, folks, slideshow. Here we go. So very quickly, just going to run through how copyright works. Um, so there's two things you need to be aware of. As soon as you start taking photographs yourself or using other people's photographs, you need to understand the difference between copyright and licensing. And Wikimedia Commons is, cares a lot about this. There are lots of volunteers on Commons that really care about copyright and don't want people to upload copyrighted things illegally. So if you do that by mistake, your photo could be flagged for deletion, could be deleted by someone. Sometimes they make a mistake and sometimes your photo's fine, but someone just deletes it anyway. And you have to just <sighs> take a deep breath, a deep breath, and just politely leave a message on their talk page and say, hey, I see that you deleted that photo. Perhaps you did not see that it is actually my photo that I took myself. It is not a copyright violation. Thanks! Exclamation point. You know, because that's the way that we have discussions in Wikipedia. Nice and polite. Okay, copyright and licensing. Any creative work that someone does, painting, picture, sculpture, photograph, has a copyright and a license. Copyright, who's allowed to make copies and share them of that creative thing? Okay, who owns the right to do it? And licensing is who else can do that? Who else is allowed to make copies? Could be everyone, could be almost nobody. Okay, so we've got to keep it clear. So the copyright, and you'll sometimes see statements like this down the bottom, copyright Lincoln University, CC by three. What does this mean? Why do some of them say use with permission? Why doesn't this say use with permission? Why doesn't this say anything? It's very important to get this right if you're going to be reusing the photo in some context. Okay, if, you're, if it's your creative work, you own the copyright and you can tell other people whether they can or can't reuse it. And that right lasts for your entire life and in fact, keeps going after you've died. Don't ask me how. And in much of the world, it's 70 years. In New Zealand, it's 50 years after you've died. In America, it's 70 years after you've died. Uh, you're still the copyright owner or whoever it was that inherited your copyrights, your next of kin or whoever it was you said in your will that you and I pass on all my copyrights to so-and-so. Nobody ever does this. Nobody puts their copyrights in their will, Right? So what actually happens is that after you've died, the photograph or the painting, no one can make a copy of it because no one knows who to ask for permission. It's not you, because you're dead. But it's someone. Who? And sometimes it's so hard to find out that we just give up. We can't make a copy of that work, and we call it an orphan work, because it doesn't have any parents. We don't know who to ask, which is very sad. Now... If you own the copyright and you don't do anything else, under most law, including US law, then you could say that that copyright is all rights reserved. That means you have keeping tight control. No one else can use it for anything unless they ask permission. Now, these licenses, these Creative Commons licenses that we briefly saw when we uploaded our photo are an alternative to that. They tell people that, no, you can actually do things with this. There's a few conditions, but you are allowed to reuse it. You don't have to come to me for permission. And most importantly, you don't have to come for permission after I've died either, which is very hard to do. Unless you imagine someone at the grave with a Ouija board trying to ask permission 
your, your ghost, I don't know. Um, so there's a bunch of different Creative Commons licenses. Some of them are okay with Wikipedia, some of them are not. They're a bit too restrictive. So these are the ones that we like, the attribution, the share alike, and of course, putting, just putting it into the public domain. Also, there are some things where there's no more copyright left, where the copyright's expired. Those are the four types of licenses that we like, that Commons likes, that Wikipedia likes. Attribution, very briefly, and I'll give you a link to much more in-depth des descriptions of these. Attribution means use it how you like, but credit me. Okay? Share alike means use it how you like, credit me, and if you make something out of it, you have to keep that same open license. It right? has to stay open. You make a painting out of my photograph, you have to keep it as a same open license. You can't say, now copyright, all rights reserved, da da da. Sorry. Public domain means use it how you like, that's it. No conditions, go for it. Okay? And there are some things like 70 years after you've died. And what's the legal term in Singapore? Is it 70 here? Anyone know? Nope. Malaysia, what is it? Does anyone know? 50? We're still on 50 in New Zealand, but only for a few more years. It's about to get extended to 70. But at some point, 50 or 70 years after you've died, the copyright expires. The copyright goes away. Anyone can now use that work for any purpose. No one has to get permission for anything. And this applies, of course, to the work of other people. So in the USA, copyright term uh, the copyright law there basically means 95 years. So uh, 1928 is the cutoff for public domain work, but anything created under the US law before 1928, roughly, the copyright has expired and you can use that for any purpose. And that advances one year per year. So next year, all the works that were made in 1929 will be become the public domain, will be free to use by anyone. So the Americans celebrate this in something called Public Domain Day in January, where they celebrate all the new works that are now available for everyone to reuse. Okay. So open licenses are great. And if we wanted, we could apply an open license to this photo here. Now, you notice we've got copyright information. This photo is copyrighted West Coast Scenic Waterways, which is a boat tourism company. The photo itself taken by Rena, by this person. Okay, Why do you think Rena took the photo if these guys own the copyright? Anyone, anyone can think why that might be? Hmm? Yeah, why is that? Why, well, shouldn't this be copyright Rena? Why is it copyright this company? Yes, she was working for them. She's a professional photographer and part of the contract signed under New Zealand law is if you are paid to take photographs for someone, they own the copyright, unless you put it in your contract that they don't, which most photographers do. She didn't. So, but she's still entitled to be credited as the photographer. These folks are entitled to be credited as the copyright owners. But the photograph is Creative Commons attribution share alike, which means Anyone can reuse this photograph of a beautiful grey egret, or a kōtuku as we call it in New Zealand, for any purpose, even commercial, as long as they credit like that. Okay? So this is a really useful thing, but if you're going to donate photographs or use other people's photographs, it's important to follow the rules, and if it says Creative Commons Attribution, you've got to credit them. Otherwise, you're breaking the agreement. So if that's the same thing, if you upload a photograph to Commons and you choose a Creative Commons attribution license, which says, please credit me, and someone uses your photograph and they don't credit you, you should send them an angry letter or an invoice, maybe. Some people just send an invoice. I think it's always polite to send them an angry letter first and saying, I notice you haven't credited me properly in this, and hopefully they will apologise. And if they don't, and if they start using your photograph to make postcards or posters or something, then you, then you send them a, an appropriate bill for your services because they've broken the licensing agreement. 
which is that they could freely use it as long as they credited you. They broke the agreement, so now it's up to you to see what you can do with them. Get a lawyer. Um, the photo can also then, of course, go into Wikipedia as well, which is one of the nice side effects, but only one of the side effects. So as we've seen in Wikimedia Commons, there's the author and the license there. So the copyright and the license, those two factors are both, careful, they're both readable in Wikimedia Commons. So the reasons you should do this, I've just made like we've talked about why we should do things in commons one is that making an image gallery available to the public second as i've just shown you commons can really clearly state both the photographer and the copyright holder if they're two different people so all their copyright and licensing information is really clear in commons which it often isn't if you just email a photo to someone okay people will find your photos get reused without permission because how would they know and the third is, is that you can give them this irrevocable open license. Those Creative Commons licenses, you can't take them back. So once a photo is released under a Creative Commons license, it's freely usable by everyone under that license until the copyright expires. You can't come along later on and say, oh, no, I've changed my mind. I think I want to make this all rights reserved copyright again. So it it's, can't, be, can't be changed. But this is actually a really powerful tool and I'll just mention one thing that might be of interest if you were something to tell people if they're planning on publishing something. Sometimes when you publish a photograph in a media outlet or a journal, they want the copyright. They make you sign an agreement that says, I transfer the copy, all my copyrights to this publishing company. right? And then they can use that photograph however they like forever. And if you want to use it, you might have to ask for permission from them, which is not very nice. So what I always recommend to researchers and scientists who are doing this, upload your photos to Wikimedia Commons first and put an irrevocable open license on them. So later on, if some publisher wants to use them, they have to, they can't. You can transfer the copyright, but you can still use it as well because the Creative Commons license can't be cancelled. Okay, they're stuck with it. So this is a really good way to protect your copyrights in some way, is by protect your, your right to reuse your own work by releasing things under a Creative Commons license. And not many people realize that, but it's a nice little thing to know is that because you can't cancel that Creative Commons license, that means your work stays free. No matter what happens later on, no matter if someone else inherits that copyright and wants to try and make money and stop other people from using the photograph, that's too late. The photo, that Creative Commons license stays forever. So this is one, and the easiest way to apply a Creative Commons license is to, well, one of the easiest ways is to put a photo in Wikimedia Commons. So if you're working with people who want to protect the right for people to keep using their photos, tell them to put their photos in Commons, and that license can't be taken away. Okay, so that's just a little presentation I give to scientists and publishers, artists sometimes. Other ways that you can share photographs. This is Flickr, the photo sharing site. Flickr's great because it also lets you put a license on a photograph. And you can use Creative Commons licenses in Flickr. And there are actually tools in Wikimedia Commons for importing photos from Flickr if they have the right license with just one click. So that's another thing you can recommend. If pe some people who have, who many people here have, have used Flickr? There's a few. It's a good tool for photographers because it lets you can upload photos to a public website, make galleries, put lots of information there. Uh, anyone can use it and you can make some of those photos open licensed and some of them copyright all rights reserved, whatever you like. How are we doing for time? We done? Yep, we're supposed to finish. Three. Three, two, six. We've got plenty of time? Okay, great. Good. So what I would like you guys to try doing is to try and explore Flickr now and see how this can work. So if you could all 
go to flickr.com. Okay. We're going to search, we're going to see if we can find a photograph of something in Singapore that's under an open license. So I have an account, but I'm not going to log in, don't need to. I'm just going to search for Singapore. And you can do this too, or for your own hometown, whatever you prefer. Search photos. Okay. So 419,468. So it's quite possible that some of these photos might be openly licensed. You reckon? There's some beauties there. Look at this. Wow. So what we do is we can search for particular licenses. Okay? So we can narrow this down. Now, we, the best one, I think, is... Commercial use and mods allowed is probably the best one. Unfortunately, you can't search for two or three things at once. You have to pick one of these, but that's okay. Commercial use and modifications allowed is probably going to be fine with Wikimedia Commons. So let's just narrow that down from 419,000. We're still down to 93,000. That's pretty good. Oh, wow, look at that. So there's a nice photo. So do that, either Singapore or your hometown, and pick a photo. <laughs> Christmas. There we go. Like that. What's this structure here? Anyone know what it is? Is it? We've not been reading our guidebooks, obviously. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, whatever. I'll leave this, make this someone else's problem. Okay, so we have a photo here. I'm going to copy the URL. And the license is, yeah, there it is. Creative Commons Attribution. It says some rights reserved, not all rights reserved. That's a license that's fine with Commons. Okay? So I'm just going to assume that this hasn't already been uploaded to Commons. I think my chances are fairly good. Copying the URL, and now when we go, whoopsie daisy, whoopsie daisy, there we go. We're going to go upload a file. Now, when we go upload a file, you'll notice there's a share images from Flickr button, by the way, that you might not have noticed before, but it was always there. So, to get an image from Flickr, we can just click and we paste in that URL. And that will work. Okay. Terrible name, Singapore JPEG. I think we're going to have to change that. Okay. And continue. So we've just pulled in someone else's photograph from Flickr, but we're allowed to because they released it under that open license. You should do the same. Now, we've got to change this, um, yeah, uh, waterfront. I wish I knew what that was by night. Okay, thank you. Oops, I'll change spelling as well. I can't type, not do typos when people are watching. Right. Okay. Now, we may get this wrong, but that's okay. Okay, let's fix that. Now, you'll notice, by the way, Singapore art science like this. Yep. Right. That's okay because um, we don't, this is just the image title. We're just going to call it Singapore Museum by Night. This is the Singapore Art Science Museum. as its actual caption. Now, if they'd put a proper description on their photograph, that would be what appears there. But they are lazy, lazy. Whoever this photographer was, very lazy. Didn't put a nice description. But that's fine. We'll do that. And let's just see if there's a category for this. Can't find one. 
Nope, doesn't know about that, so there's something missing there. Let's just make it Singapore. And in the, well, no, it's in the 2010s, actually, because it was taken in 2018, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, that'll do. And now we publish. So that really doesn't exist. There it is. Okay, so we do have a picture of it. Okay, so we didn't even have to take a photograph now to use Commons. We've gone through a huge library of photos in Flickr. We've found one that is released, already been released under an open license, and we are now able to copy it across and potentially use it in a Wikipedia article. Now, if we were going to do this a lot, it would be good to go and now check the category Singapore Art Science Museum and see maybe this photo is actually already there, in which case it's all right, someone will come along and delete the duplicate. But you'll notice when we bring it in from Flickr, all this nice information like the camera location, view it in OpenStreetMap, the source URL is all there for us. It's quite nice, the interface with Flickr is quite good. And then it mentions that, you know, it was checked to make sure that it really was confirmed. Some human being will go off and check. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, look at that. You see, so uh, can we, do we need to live it here according to the license? Okay. I'm not, okay. No, that's that's not the license. That's the copyright statement. Yeah, but uh, it says copyright three B's. Need, uh, do we need to leave it there, or can no? We? I think we should crop it out. Yeah, we generally it's not recommended to put watermarks or copyright statements or anything on the image, uh, and because the license allows us, it says Creative Commons attribution doesn't say no modifications. If it did, share a lot. If it, if it did, then we wouldn't be able to crop it. But we could crop that and upload a fresh version without that little watermark in the corner. There's no cropping option in there. With there is indeed. There's a fantastic thing called Crop Tool, which you can turn on, which allows you to do exactly this, crop and upload versions of theirs. Let's do it. Let's do it. Since, yeah, let's do it. So we're going to use Crop Tools. We'll take a moment. <coughs> da -de da -de da And it says, okay, how much we want to take. Take all of this. And we'll just take this out, and we'll just crop that bit out there. And preview, it just uses a low resolution image to start with, so but it looks fine. And we're going to overwrite it, yep, here we go. And I've just uploaded the cropped version, dumpty dumpty dum, and if we go check, we see that now the image doesn't have the little copyright tag there. But that's fine because it's actually stated there in the author, so the information has not been lost. It's fine. We're not hiding or who where it came from, but we're just making the photo more usable now by taking out that little copyright glitch. Okay, so that was uh, two things we just demonstrated. And notice, by the way, the old version of the image is still there. All the part, just like Wikipedia, all the past versions of the images are saved. So if someone didn't like what we did, they can go revert and jump back to the previous version. So there's no permanent harm been done here. Okay. Right. So if we were doing this properly, we'd now go and find the category for the Art Science Museum and add it and so forth and maybe use this one on the Wikipedia article. Yeah. Yes. The preferences, yes. Okay. The crop tool isn't turned on by default. You have to go into your editing preferences and commons and turn it on. Uh, the second one is about the table uh, down. <laughs> the, yeah, in the metadata section. Yeah. Yeah? No. <laughs> um, At the end of the page. Oh, yeah, right down the bottom. Uh -huh. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, this table, um, I noticed that when I upload the photo, it's there, but after a few days, it's gone. Oh. 
I've never seen that. Is there a reason? Anyone know? No, haven't counted that. Mm. No, the X of it was a video. No, no I've, I've not seen. Sorry, I don't know anything about how the X of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, that's not relevant for the base Commons Basics workshop we we're doing right now. But what is relevant is that you notice this data here is something that belongs to the camera. That's settings that you can put into your camera or your phone that stamp every photo you take with not just time signature, but even you can even put an author name in there. Now, this is interesting because the photo is actually credited to the three Bs. But the author is apparently Robert Bernardi. So there's a clash between the label that the person who uploaded it used and the EXIF data, the author data, in their camera. Perhaps they're the same person, one presumes, but sometimes you get weird mismatches where someone else used, where someone grabbed someone else's camera to take a photograph. So there could be a mismatch between the person who actually owns the copyright, who took the photo, and the name of the camera owner. The camera owner's name is irrelevant for copyright purposes. It doesn't matter whose camera you use. It's still your photo. Right? Unless you're a monkey. Shh. Don't tell that. Um, there's the famous cop monkey copyright case. Never mind. Um, but this will cause some, co some commons people will get very upset about this if they see a difference between the author and the supposed uploader. And they say, wait, these are two different people. This is a copyright violation. And some... Some commons people are a bit, mm, a bit frustrating in that matter. So this is why I always try and recommend that you do things very clearly and transparently. Use your own photographs. Don't try and fudge it with someone else's photo. If you have a photo, you want, if you wanted to upload a photo of yourself and you know that someone else actually took it using your phone, don't try and pretend that, oh no, it's a selfie. I just have really long arms. It's fine. Honestly, I took this photo myself. Um, there are some commons person would just go, no, you didn't, and delete it. Because that's right, they, they, you didn't take it. As someone else's copyrighted photo, even if it's your phone, even if it's of you, you're not the copyright owner of the photograph, are you? Right. This is a distinction that people are not clear about often. It's a big difference. So the, who, who pushed the button? They're the creative person that took the photograph. They're the copyright owner. If they were being paid to do it, then maybe their employer is the copyright owner, but you're not, just because you're in the photo. Right, so these are, these are distinctions that become important later on in Commons. Okay, so we uploaded the, uh, an image from Flickr, and I do recommend looking for Flickr. If you're looking for photos on a particular theme, don't forget to check Flickr and search for public domain, um, modification and um, commercial reuse allowed. There's a couple of, two couple of different categories in Flickr that are ones that are, are good for commons. So don't forget that. Sometimes you can get great photos without even having to go outside. You don't have to go for a walk with your camera to get good photos of buildings, for example, particularly in places with lots of tourists. Okay, another source of photos is iNaturalist iNaturalist is an app you can put on your phone that I was using it yesterday in the Botanic Gardens. And if you take a photo with iNaturalist, someone will come along and give you an ID for what that plant or bird or reptile is eventually, sometimes very quickly. The lizards that I photographed yesterday on my phone have been identified in iNaturalist in a couple of minutes. And these are volunteers. There's a whole volunteer community, just like Wikipedia. There's a whole volunteer iNaturalist community of people who go around and take photographs of plants and animals and help identify other peoples and so forth and so forth. But the nice thing about iNaturalist is that some of the photos there are also available under an open license. In this case, very hard to see. This is my photograph and it says CCBY. So I make sure all of my iNaturalist photographs 
are available under an open attribution license, right? Now, the problem is that that's actually not the default in iNaturalist. When you first set up an account, it puts in uh, CCBY NC, uh, non-commercial only license on the photos. And so if you know, so if you're setting up with iNaturalist and you want to try taking photos of your local plants and animals, and you're setting up your account, go into your settings and make sure you've chosen an a more open license than the default one. And if you know someone else who's using iNaturalist, ask them if they've done that. Okay? Because if they've, they have, then those photos can also be used from iNaturalist. And there, in fact, is a whole tool uh, that's been hacked together to speed up importing photos from iNaturalist into Wikimedia Commons. Uh, we won't demonstrate it today because it's not a beginner tool but it speeds things up quite a bit. So there are lots of services like this where people are also sharing photographs that you could use. Yes? Mm. Yeah, 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 there's AI, yeah. <coughs> Yes, yeah, that's right. I didn't mention that. There's really good AI in iNaturalist now that makes a really excellent educated guess. In New Zealand, I know it's not always right. It depends where you are. It depends. Spiders, it's terrible at. It's absolutely useless. Birds and reptiles, it's great. Most plants, it's pretty good. It all depends where you are and how many people have been identifying things in your area already. Um, but um, the tool that uh, automates bringing things across from iNaturalist does ins make you insist that you have at least a couple of other people have verified that that is in fact the species you think it is. So, so those are a couple of other places that you can bring things across from Commons. Um, let's see. Yeah. An image on Flickr. Sure. Uh, from Flickr, you bring an image down, yes? In Flickr, and uh, upload this image on... Uh, Commons. Commons. Is the image will conserve the license of uh, Flickr, or it will uh, take the new the new license of uh, CCB? No, you cannot take an... Okay, it can't, because the only person that can apply a license to a photograph is the copyright owner, mm -hmm. right? So the only reason you can use that tool to bring photos from Flickr is because the Flickr photographer has already put the right license on them. Okay? You can't change that license because okay. you're not the copyright owner. But uh, so uh, Wikimedia, because Commons has its own license. It does, but it has to use the Flickr one. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yes, Flickr is using an old-fashioned CC license. We don't like that one, but that's the one that Flickr uses. We have to use it too. Thank you. Can't update um, it. Another question. Uh, I think we, we talk about uh, the, the way um, it's important if you work uh, for an organization as photographer uh, and you want to uh, upload uh, the image uh, on Wikimedia Commons, you have yes. to tell the, your employer to, to leave the license or to make this image free? Well, that's a really interesting conversation you have. If yeah. you work for a company and you take photographs as part of your job, not in your spare time, yeah. then your, your copyrights could be owned by your employer. It depends on your local law, yeah. your country, and what your employment contract says. Okay. Right? So check both of those things. And if it turns out you are not the copyright owner of those photographs, you will have to negotiate with your employer as to whether they want to upload those photographs. You could do it for them, but yeah. they are the copyright owner. They have to be the ones who choose a license. Yeah, it is uh, about this because uh, we are all humans, you know. Uh, is there any uh, law, is there any document we have to sign with... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't. Yeah. Can say it in French, sir. Yeah, en français. Um, Est-il possible de, voilà, est y a-t-il des documents qu'on peut signer pour être sûr que okay, réellement demain il n'y aura pas de problème parce qu'on est tous des humains et les gens changent d'avis. Okay. Uh, 
tout transférer les licences. Ah, transférer les licences euh, voilà. pour le copyright. Donc, personnellement, ce que moi j'ai déjà testé dans mon pays, parce que je, ah, un, je travaille un, dans. Un, un peu français, sûrement. Je suis aussi actif dans OpenStreetMap. Okay. Et ce qu'on fait, avant que une, comme une municipalité nous donne en fait des données à uploader sur OpenStreetMap, ouais. on lui demande de voilà d'écrire de, en fait une note pour dire qu'il abandonne tous les droits sur les images sur sur les données là et qu'il signe voilà que la donnée est dans le domaine du libre qu'on peut applaudir et utiliser comme on veut voilà ouais. Chris what do you think so uh, I, I think he uh, possibly wants to know if uh, maybe there is a what I would call VRT like we have on yeah, yeah 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 Yeah. Commons. Donc sur uh, Commons, yeah. il y en a. Yeah. Now that we've just gone beyond the basics of a Commons introduction, exactly. but yes, there is a tool. There is a tool yes. where you can get your employer to send a letter to Wikimedia Commons saying, "Yes, I released this photo under this license." However, it is a very complicated legal statement. There is a tool to help create that legal statement, and an, a volunteer will check that letter and make sure that it is okay and then that will go be added to the photo and say yes this has been approved and we have a letter of permission it's very complex i do it sometimes it's always better for the copyright owner themselves to just upload the photo it saves a lot of trouble but yes there are ways of doing it so just to you know paint a better picture a, a clearer picture we had a wiki loves africa in 2021 yeah. under the health and awareness theme so there was a guy He was um, contracted by eHealth Clinic in mm -hmm. Abuja, Nigeria, to take um, photos during um, a wiki, a ma malaria, I think. Yeah. A malaria um, enlightenment uh, or enlightening um, session for pregnant women. So when he submitted the photos, the director saw Wiki Loves Africa and then took one shot and uploaded from the gallery the guy gave to them. Yeah. So we, uh, of course, after the whole thing, found out that the image won the second prize. I think it was $800 then. Yep, yep, yep. But the director, who uh, is an Indian, uh, of course, he mentioned that this guy was on contract when he yep. took the shot. Sure. But we couldn't just take his word for it. You understand? So we, of course, had him have the guy reach out to us. Yep. and you know verified stuff and have him go through the vrt yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah the process yeah to do all that so yeah it's it's possible but it's complicated like he said it's yeah it's yeah, yeah. Legal process. It, it, i always try and avoid that so what i have done is i have um i have got some sample text here that i will also share in the links with everyone uh, of letters that i ask people when i say i would love to use this photograph but we have a shortage of photos, you have the wrong license, would you like to change your license, da 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 da, or this is for Flickr, or there's one for um, iNaturalist, that I explain, Creative Commons license, you are welcome to, these are all, I think I put CC0 or something here, you can use these uh, if it helps, but the easiest way is for the person to all, to change the license themselves, to go and put it on Flickr and make it an open license there, right? then it's public, and then you can just take the photo across. So it's always great if the copyright owner does the work first, rather than you have to come and get that letter of permission later. So always look for ways that you can do that. But yeah, copyrights can become complicated. Um, there are ways of getting around a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So that was the key copyright stuff. I have got a handout... Oopsie daisy there, which explains a little more the different sorts of licenses, what they are involved, and links to them and how they work. I've added that to the link notes, and we won't go into that today. That's the sample images. Right, and I've also got a photo into Commons workflow, so a checklist that you can follow if you want to do a, what I just did there. So the things that I suggest, and I'll make this bigger. So let's just go that. So I'm imagining I've got a photograph of um, a mountain, which I call, you know, Mount Thingy 
or something. So, yeah. So there's a mountain. Okay, small. It's on the west coast. It's also it's actually called Mosquito Hill because it has lots of mosquitoes. So there it is on Mosquito Hill. There it is. Yeah. So I'll just go through the workflow that I use if I was I was employed to be a Wikipedian at large and get lots more photos of New Zealand tourist spots into Commons. So I took that photograph, I look it up on a map to find out, make sure I know the exact name and coordinates of it. I look in Commons to see is there a Mosquito Hill already in Commons? Nope. There's no Mosquito Hill. I'm just going to make sure, make that a capital H. Search. Nope. Nope. Okay, doesn't look like it's in, there are any photos of it already. I look in Wikidata to see if it exists there. And yep, it's in Wikidata. It's definitely a hill. There's even a photo of it. Oh, interesting. Not a very good photo. Who took that? That oh, was me. Um, <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, so look at the photo. That's, that's a terrible photo. Um, but I was driving across the bridge at the time, and I stuck the camera out the window. So it was, it was very early morning. So it's got a good description, but if I go down, I'll see there's no category Mosquito Hill. So it doesn't even have its own category in Commons yet, right? So there's a bit of work to do. So if I wanted to take that, take those photos, I would have to upload it. I would create a category especially for it and put this photo in as well. So there'd be two photos now in the Mosquito Hill category. And I'd replace that photo in Wikidata with a nicer one, the one that I, my, my better photo. So these are all the things that I would do as part of an upload workflow, which I have gone through here. So we won't go, I don't think we'll go through into detail because this is getting into more than just a basic one, but this checklist here would be quite useful when you start doing that. So things to note, OK shots with educational, historical media use. So you want to just, you want to put good photos up there. And they don't have to be great, but they should be useful for someone. So a thousand photos of your cat, maybe just one would be fine. I don't know. Some people seem to put a lot of photos, not very good photos, that I can't, I can't think of what that might be useful for. But it could be, but it, like the Mosquito Hill, there was in fact only one photo of Mosquito Hill. In Commons until I took that well, that one. So I think there is a reason for adding that photo. So I can check in Wikipedia to see if there's an article about Mosquito Hill. Check in Commons to see if it's already if there are photos already there. Nope. Check Wikidata to see if the if it's got a photo. Um, pick a batch of photos. Remember how I said it's important to make sure pick photos that all depict the pick the same place or thing. So you can do a batch upload and save some time. Don't worry if they look rotated 90 degrees. That will all be fine. Put your actual name if you want to be credited properly. All right? Pick a license. A short, sensible file name. I like to use my initials, like you said. A basic caption, which is just a very short description that you might see under the photo in an info box. Or actually, no one's completely sure what captions are for. Um, it, was a nice, it was a nice invention, but no one can agree as to whether they're a caption under an image or are they the alt text that you would use if someone couldn't see the photograph. But those are different things. Those aren't the same thing at all. So people are still arguing about exactly what captions are for. But the full description should be lots of background information and context and anything specifically about that photo if you can. Good descriptions are great at least one specific category. And in this case, we'd make a new category, Mosquito Hill. We just type it in and Commons would say, there's no such category. And we'd say, we don't care. We're going to make it. Okay. Check the date and location, copy the information down, publish, add the depicts information, skip that if you don't want to. Go back and check all the photos to see if they're all the same and change the descriptions if needed. Check the, now actually check the photo, open it up and make sure it works. 
Go look for, uh, um, see if you can find a place to use it in, Wiki, in Wikipedia. Missing image, right? If it's, if it's, as long as it's improving the article, you shouldn't be shy about adding your photograph or even replacing a bad photograph that's already there. It's not the end of the world. If someone disagrees with you, they'll just change it back. That's all fine. No one's hurt, didn't cost you anything. Put the image in, little caption, and don't be shy, like I said, right? And there's lots of other stuff about, for example, if you made a category Mosquito Hill that didn't exist, you can actually go and actually make that category real. Click on it, make it real, add a short description. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You know? There are people who will come along and do that for you sometimes. Sometimes they just delete the category. I know, categories are stupid. Uh, but that's the basic workflow that we've just walked through of going from a photograph on your phone to a photograph in a Wikipedia article. Okay. Right, so that's probably all we need to go through because otherwise people's brains will melt because this has been a lot. But what I'll do is if you want to open up your... Um, browsers and use this short code here, wwiki 7 g 7 y capitals. That's the short link to today's description with all those links I just showed you. It says this, this was the simplest way, short of generating a QR code and running around for you to hold your phones up to it. This was the simplest way. So I'm just, use, just use that short link, open up that on your browser, save or bookmark it or something, or email it to yourself, um, and I will see if I can make this also available on the, on the page um, session description on the website. But in case not, just go find that short link, w.wiki slash 7g7y. Okay. Now I'll keep adding to this as I think of more things and more links, and if I remember some of the questions that were asked, I'll annotate this as well. This is the joy of a Wikipedia-based talk description, as I can keep adding to it. If any of you remember something useful, you can edit this and add it. It's allowed. I'll let you do it. It's okay. It's even part, it's not, even if it's off my user page. If you want to add in a link or something here that we talked about, then go ahead. But yeah, but that will do, I think, for this, the notes here. Now, before we go and take a well-earned break, because we've been going for a while, um, any other questions or ideas or things you want to, to do? Or do you want to just stand up and have a stretch? Yes, please. Hmm. Yep. Yes. Yeah, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because certainly having your... I take most things with my phone, but if you own a decent camera, you can edit the EXIF data and you could add your name. Of course, this, like I say, causes problems if someone, you lend your camera to someone else, right? And ditto with license. It's not always clear that you're going to be using the same license for all your photographs, no matter what the circumstance. So I tend to leave that information off and apply it at the Commons upload stage, um, because I've just only if only because I have run into some problems in the past with photographers who have put name, company, all rights reserved in their EXIF data for their camera, and forgotten when they've uploaded photographs, which have then been taken down by Commons busybodies, uh, because they said, no, it says all rights reserved there, that's not a license. So, so I find that's more trouble than it's worth. I tend to be cautious about recommending people put anything distinctive. Nevertheless, you know, it can be useful. It's, I think it's more a matter of personal taste as to whether you want to, to do that or not, but it's not something I tend to, to do with my own cameras. But yeah, it's an option, absolutely. Now, yeah, so things that you might get into trouble with. 
I mean, Commons, it's wonderful and it's very easy to add photos too, but there are a lot of people on Commons who really, really like enforcing rules. And I don't know, maybe they were sent to bed too early without dinner for breaking rules when they were young or something. I cannot understand their mentality, but they very much like enforcing rules. And if there are laws, then they will make sure they enforce them and they'll delete the photos that break the rules. Um, so a common rule might be you can't add someone else's copyrighted work in your photograph, right? So if you're standing here and there's a nice painting behind you, someone will say, no, nope, sorry, that's a copyrighted painting, you can't have that. Um, if you were standing here and the painting was way over there and you could hardly see it, well, there's a, that's considered by law, that's okay, that's, a bit, that's too small to be important, but some copyright people will still say, nope, nope, there's a painting. And you might, so you, some of the speakers today at Wikimania are carrying around a little cuddly toy, for example, and they might have Gosh, like the uh, merlion that we all got in our welcome packs. They might prop that up on the speaker stand like that and say, look, I have a little toy here. Unfortunately, the merlion that we got in our conference packs is a copyrighted um, manufactured object. So it's actually anyone who's holding it up for a photograph, that's a copyrighted object. And you didn't get the permission from the manufacturer. I know, I know, yes. Some people... Yeah, 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 I know, but so, it's just a toy. But, ah, but no, there are certain, as, you, as you possibly are aware, there are certain Commons editors that will take down any photo of someone with a copyrighted toy, even if it's just a small part of the photo. And this, I know, this, when we had, as you may have heard in a few years ago in Christchurch, we had a, a mass shooting in a mosque, um, a horrible event, yeah. And immediately afterwards, there were spontaneous um, memorials, uh, flowers and cards and posters and candles and so forth around all the mosques in New Zealand. And so a group of us went around and photographed those memorials because that was, they were very short-lived, they were going to be taken away, and we wanted to make sure that that historical moment was captured in Commons. So we did, and this is something that should happen with any historic event that's going on, make sure someone is capturing photos of it for the historic record, because that's what Commons is good for. But in one of the photos, someone had got a little teddy bear and put it in amongst the flowers. And a Commons person said, oh, that's a copyright violation. Take that photo down. So, and someone who wrote a little message and drew a little picture of a flower on one of the cards copyright violation, take that photo down. So there are some commons people who apply the rules in a very, very strict fashion. And what can you do? Yeah? Yep. That's right. In Chicago. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Copyrighted work. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 So whether the copy, whether these strict enforcers are right or not to do it, I'm mentioning it because it is something for you to be aware of if you are taking photographs. Just make sure. That, I mean, some, if there is a protest march going on down the street, 
and you want to capture it, and you take a photo that includes a banner with someone's painted a cartoon of a politician on it. I don't know if that's even legal in Singapore, probably not. Um, you'll probably get thrown in jail. Well, I didn't say that. Uh, so there's someone's got a cartoon of a politician on this banner. That's a copyrighted artwork that's they, that you've just photographed, and you didn't get their permission. They haven't released that photo into Commons. So that photo of that protest march could be taken down. So if you're photographing the protest march, don't include the banner with the cartoon on it. That's the solution. Just be aware of things that could get could be copyright violations and shoot around them or make them very small and in the background. But moderate the way you take photographs so that you're not vulnerable to this sort of silly takedown. Okay? It's doable. And don't make that the only photograph you took of the march is the one that includes a copyrighted image. Right? Take lots of photos so that if one gets taken down, it doesn't matter. So there's, yeah, there's, there's lots of ways. You have to be pragmatist and work around some of this stuff. Okay. Now, I think we are well past. Yeah. All right. I am around for right through to Sunday. I'm happy to talk to people and answer questions. If you have that URL, that's great. I'll also put it into the description of today's event. But we should call it quits now. Thank you very much. Now, we should probably reassemble this room into some sort of something similar to what it looked like. Otherwise, they'll be cross with us. Okay, so no one's sneaking out before we've moved the tables.